Henry in the News, usually presented at this time by John Manville, and the Dr. Fake, usually presented at 9.30 p.m. Eastern War Time by the Shenley Laboratory over most of these stations, will not be heard tonight due to the broadcast of the All-Star Baseball Game. The Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. Gillette presents from Forbes Field at Pittsburgh the 12th Annual All-Star Baseball Game. Tonight's Diamond Classic brings together the outstanding players of the American and National Leagues as selected by their club managers. The proceeds, including $25,000 contributed by Gillette for broadcasting rights, go to the Major League Fund, which provides baseball equipment for our armed forces. This is Bill Slater with Don Dunphy and Bill Corum greeting you for the Gillette Safety Razor Company, your radio host at the World Series, the Kentucky Derby, football bowl games, major boxing shows, and similar sports events of national interest the year-round. I want to remind you that if any war news of transcendental importance is uh, forthcoming during the course of this game out here at Pittsburgh, our broadcast will be interrupted so that that news may be brought to you. Since the game is about to get underway, I'll give you immediately the starting lineups as they have been picked by the rival managers of the American National League for this ball game tonight. Starting the game for the visiting team in gray uniforms, the American League. Batting first will be Thurman Tucker of Chicago White Sox, who is in center field. Batting second will be Stanley Spence of the Washington Senators in right field. Batting third will be George McQuinn of the St. Louis Browns on first base. Batting fourth in the cleanup spot will be Burns Stevens of St. Louis shortstop. Batting fifth, Bob Johnson of the Boston Red Sox in left field. Batting sixth, Ken Keltner of Cleveland on third base. Batting seventh, Bobby Dorr of Boston on second base. Batting eighth, Raleigh Hemsley of the Yankees who is catching tonight. And batting ninth and pitching for the American League, Hank Barroi of the Yankees. The manager of Joe McCarthy, as you know. The coaches are Art Fletcher and Joe Cronin. Starting lineup for the National League, the home team this, after, this afternoon, this evening rather, and in white uniforms, is as follows. Batting first, Augie Golan of Brooklyn in left field. Batting second, Cabaretta, Bill Cabaretta of the Chicago Cubs on first base. Batting third, Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cards in center field. Batting fourth, Walker Cooper, and catching tonight, he is of the St. Louis Cards. Batting fifth, Dixie Walker of Brooklyn, playing in right field. Batting sixth, Bob Elliott of Pittsburgh, playing at third base. Batting seventh, Connie Ryan of the Boston Braves at second base. Batting eighth, Slats Marion of the St. Louis Cards at shortstop. Batting ninth and pitching for the National Leaguers tonight is Bucky Walters of the Cincinnati Reds. The National League manager is manager Billy Southworth of the Cards. The coaches are Mike Gonzalez of the Cards and Freddie Fitzsimmons of the Phils. The umpires for this flash here tonight are at the plate for the first half of the game. George Barr of the National League. At first, Charlie Berry of the American League. At second, Ziggy Sears of the National League. And at third, Cal Hubbard of the American League. The umpires will be changed during the last half of the game, the last four and a half innings, so that American and National League umpires will be in the uh, proper places throughout the game. Uh, there have been oranges given out here tonight. Old crates of oranges going to the players and some of the visitors from the San Bernardino Argonauts. The town of San Bernardino being represented here, and it's the old training spot out in California of the Pittsburgh Pirates, where they used to train before the war. Seated on the bench tonight for the rival managers are the following players who are available to take part in the game, many of whom will probably come into the game before it's completed. For the American League, as pitchers, there is Dutch Leonard of Washington, Joe Page of New York, Dizzy Trout of Detroit, Bucky Newsom of Philadelphia, Al Newhauser of Detroit, Bob Muncrief of the St. Louis Browns, Tex Houston of the Boston Red Sox, and Orville Grove of the Chicago White Sox. There are reserve American League catchers, Frankie Hayes of Philadelphia, Rick Farrell of Washington. Reserve American League infielders are Rudy York of Detroit, Pinky Higgins of Detroit, and Lou Boudreau, the playing manager of the Cleveland Indians. Reserve outfielders for the American League tonight, members of the squad starting on the bench, will be R.S. Hockett of Cleveland, an outfielder, Pete Fox of Boston, who came in for George Case of Washington, who was injured, and Roy Cullenbein of the Cleveland Indians. Reserve players on hand tonight and available to Billy Southworth, the manager of the National League team, are pitchers, the only lefty on the National League squad, Ken Raffensperger of the Phils, Bill Boisel of the Giants, who came in substituting for Max Lanier of the Cards, who has an injured shoulder, uh, Nate Andrews, Al Javery, and Jim Tobin of the Boston Braves, and Rip Sewell of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Reserve catchers on hand for the National Leaguers tonight are Mickey Owen of the Dodgers, and Ray Mueller of the uh, Cincinnati Reds. Reserve infielders are Don Johnson of Chicago, uh, Slats, uh, Slats Marion is starting, uh, Phil Cabaretto of Chicago, Frank McCormick of the Cincinnati Reds, Eddie Miller of Cincinnati will not be able to play tonight, 
He has an injury, and so he won't have a chance to play at shortstop before his hometown a crowd, for he was born and raised here in Pittsburgh. Reserve outfielders on hand for the National League tonight are Vince DiMaggio of Pittsburgh, uh, Mel Ott, the playing manager of the New York Giants, Big Bill Nicholson of Chicago, and Ducky Medley of the New York Giants. The mayor of the city, Mayor Cornelius Scully, and the governor of the state, General Edward Martin, were introduced a little while ago by Rosie Rosewell, who broadcasts the local games here in Pittsburgh. The game is just about to get underway. The National Leaguers, the home team, are taking the field. The lineup is, as we gave it to you, on third base for the National Leaguers, is Bobby Elliott on the second on second base, is Connie Ryan on first base, Phil Cavaretto, and at shortstop, Marion. Now here, ladies and gentlemen, is the National Anthem. Field now on the field is Augie Galan in left, Stan Musial in center, Dixie Walker in right. On the mound is Bucky Walters, behind the plate is Big Walker Cooper. The ball game is about to get underway. The leadoff hitter for the American Leaguers will be Thurman Tucker, who is playing center field. He's the White Sox slugger. He's a left-handed hitter, and he's just about getting ready to go up there. Now here to bring you the first half of this all-star baseball game from Pittsburgh tonight, which, be, which is being played before a capacity crowd of 35,000 hatless and coatless people under the excellent floodlights at old historic Forbes Field. Here to bring you the first half of this ball game is our Gillette colleague, Mr. Don Dunphy. Donaldo, here she is, the big game. Thank you, Bill Slater. Good evening, everyone. Well, Bucky Waller is of the Cincinnati Reds and Walker Cooper of the St. Louis Cardinals, the battery for the National Leaguers. And stepping into the batter's box to lead off of the American League, hitting 327 right now, having led the American League throughout most of the campaign, but he sloughed off a little bit in the last week or two. Tucker bats left-handed, and the outfield plays him practically straight away. Walker's winds up and delivers. It's outside for ball one. Bucky Walters fires one down, and it's ball one on Thurman Tucker, leading off for the American Leaguers in the first half of the first inning of this game here at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. Wallers gets the sign from Walker Cooper, fires it in, it's hit. Down to shortstop, Marion has it. There's a throw over to first base, and he is out. Marion's throw to Cabaretta, retires the leadoff man, Thurman Tucker. We expect to see a lot of fine short fielding tonight between Marion of the Cardinals playing for the National Leaguers and Stephen of the Browns playing for the Americans. Stanley Spence of Washington coming up, the American League right fielder. Batting left-handed. 293 hitter right now. Stands deep in the batter's box. Waller throws. He hits it. A bounce to right down to Cavaretta. Bill steps on first, and there is out number two. Stanley Spence hitting the first pitch. An inside curve. Drilled one down the first baseline to the first baseman, Bill Cavaretta, and he's up. George McQuinn of the St. Louis Browns playing first base for the American Leaguers, batting right-handed. Correction, batting left-handed. Steps into the batter's box. 265 batter right now. Here's the pitch by Walters, and it's a low curve outside, ball one. Low curve to a left-handed hitter. One and nothing the count. Outfield is sky to the right for McQuinn. A straightaway hitter. Walters goes into his motion, the pitch. It's hit high in foul territory, back of first. Cabaretta goes back for it, and then it goes up into the stands as he can't get it. Makes the count one and one. One ball, one strike. That incidentally is the first foul ball hit in this all-star game. We expect there will be a lot more hits before the evening is over. The National Leaguers are wearing their white 
home uniforms and the visiting team, the American Leaguers, are wearing the traveling gray. Walters delivers. A slow ball, fails to get the outside corner, and it's ball two. He's up on that a little bit. Count is now two and one. Walters again goes into his motion, the pitch. Another slow ball is too low, ball three. Down at three and one. George McQuinn at bat. This is Waller's fifth appearance in the All-Star game. He throws, it's hit down the first baseline, it goes out into right field, and there is the first hit of the game. It's returned to the infield by Dixie Walker, and McQuinn is down on first base with a single. That was a ball driven on the ground between Honey Ryan, the second baseman, and Phil Cabaret, the first baseman, out into right field, the first hit of the evening. Vern Stephens, the shortstop, batting right-handed. First right-handed batter to face Wallers, by the way, the cleanup hitter. Stephens of the St. Louis Brown. Hitting 302 in the regular American League campaign. McQuinn leads off. Waller stretches and throws. Fastball is outside. Ball one. A fast curve just off the outside corner. Burns Stephens, midway in the batter's box. The outfield around to the left. Waller takes a stretch. McQuinn is off. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses at a low curve. Strike one. One and one. George McQuinn taking a sizable lead off first base. Wallace goes to the rosin bag, gets the sign from Walker Cooper, the catcher. The infield is fairly deep for this good right-hand hitter, Vern Stephens. McQuinn leads off. There's the pitch. And it's outside, a slow curve for ball two. Fail to get the outside corner, and the count is two balls and one strike. There's no score in the game yet, two out in the American League half of the first inning. Umpire at home plate is George Barr of the National League. Wallace takes a stretch, McQuinn leads off. There's the pitch, and it's a strike. A sharp curve, got the outside corner, and the count is now two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. And George McQuinn on at first base with a single. No score as yet. Stephens, a wide batting stance, right-handed hitter. Wallers again takes a stretch and throws. He hits it, a drive going out of the center field for a hit. It's fielded by Musio quickly back, and the runner pulls up at second base. The hitter at first. Two hits in a row. Stephens on first, McQuinn on second. And hard-hitting Bob Johnson of the Boston Red Sox, the left fielder of the American League, is coming up to bat. Johnson is playing in his fifth All-Star game. In the regular American League campaign, he's hitting 318. Pretty fair hitter. Two out, two on. First two men were retired. Now two hits in a row. Men on first and second. Waller throws. A curve outside, ball one. Failed to get the corner. George Barr of the National League, umpiring at home plate. Charlie Berry of the American at first. Ziggy Sears of the National at second. And Cal Hubbard of the American at third base. One ball on Big Bob Jones. Here's a pitch. A slow ball. Got the outside corner. Strike one. He pulled the string on that. Got it over. The count is one and one. Joe Cronin of Boston is coaching at first for the Americans and Arthur Fletcher of the Yankees at third. Johnson deep in the batter's box. Waller takes a stretch throw. It's low. Fastball low for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Bucky Wallers, usually a pretty hot man under the arc light, is now in a bit of a spot. Two on, two out. Men on first and second. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses a low curve. A sharp low curve. Two and two the count. Wallers had him bending and swinging all the way around on that one. George McQuinn on second base. Burns Stevens on first. Two out. Count is two and two. Here's the pitch. And he hits it. A fly ball going foul out into left field, bouncing off the fence. A fast inside curve came in. He started the swing, pulled up. It bounced off his bat and ended up out in foul territory in left field. So the count stays at two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Two out and two men on. Four deuces. 
the All-Star Game at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. A capacity crowd. No score yet and two out. Walters is getting the sign from Walker Cooper. Outfield well around to the left for Johnson. A good hard hitter. Walters takes the stretch throws. And he took him out. And he lost the bat as he swung and rolled out towards second base. Johnson went out swinging on a sharp curve. Ending the inning. He lost control of the bat. It bounced past the pitcher's box. Didn't hit Walters though. And ended up down near second base. For the American League in the first inning... No runs, two hits, two left, and no errors for the National League. At the end of the first half of the first inning, there is no score in the game. And now Hank Perroy, the ace of the Yankee mound staff, goes out to the rubber for the American Leaguers, and his battery mate, Raleigh Hemsley, will do the receiving. Perroy in the regular campaign is 111 and lost four. Catching percentage, 733. He's a willowy right-hander who gets the ball up to the plate very fast with a snap motion. He just Snaps it in, a right-hand pitcher. The American League, out in the field, Bob Johnson in left field, Thurman Tucker in center, Stanley Spence in right field, Kenny Keltner at third, Vern Stevens at short, Bobby Dorr at second, and George McQuinn at first. Catching is Raleigh Hemsley, and the pitcher is Fordham Hank Perroy. Leading off of the National League in the first inning is Augie Galan of the Brooklyn Dodgers, playing left field. Augie Galan batting left-handed, hitting 322 in the regular campaign. Been a tower of strength for the Brooklyn Dodgers. At the start of the season, Galan was a switch hitter, but now he's batting left-handed all the time. Burrow, he gets the sign, goes into his motion. Snaps it in, and it's hit down to third base. Keltner has it. There's a throw over to first. He's out. Galan, the leadoff man, hits the first ball, drives it down to third base. And is out, Keltner to McQuinn. One out. Phil Cabaretta of the Chicago Cubs, the National League's first baseman, is coming up to bat. Cabaretta also bats left-handed. 296 is batting mark. The pitch, a fastball just a little bit too close. Ball one. Roy came down fast with that one. Outfield straight away for Cabaretta. Roy goes into his motion, snaps it in. It's hit foul back in the screen below us. One and one the count. Raleigh Hensley, the regular battery mate for Roy for the Yankees, is doing the receiving for him. Cabaretta of the Chicago Cubs up at bat. A pitch. Slow ball outside. Ball two. He started to bunt, pulled up when, we, when he saw it go away. Count is two balls and one strike. On deck is Stanley Musio, power hitter of the league. Roy takes a lot of time rubbing up a new ball. Wants to get it just right. Outfield straight away for Cabaretta. He could draw a straight line between home plate and center field of Thurman Tucker. Now we're ready. Roy throws high. Ball three, just over the peak of the cap, a fastball. Down at three and one, no score yet. American League got two on in the first half of the first, failed to score. The pitch, and he walked him. Fastball outside for ball four. Cabaretta struck down to first base with a base on ball. Stanley Musio, leading batter of the National League coming up. Musial, a 366 hitter. Batting left-handed, one out, one on. No score yet. Cameretta at first. In the background, you probably can hear the public address system inter introducing the batters as they come up. Here's the pitch. It's low for ball one. All these players out here, by the way, are wearing their regular uniform. For instance, when a Cardinal comes up, he's got a Cardinal uniform. When a Yankee comes up, he's got a Yankee uniform. All wearing their own uniform. Cameretta leads off the throw to first. Just about gets back. Oh, he got that ball over to McQuinn very fast. One ball on the batter. Hank Baroy takes the stretch. Musial waits. Stands deep in the box. The pitch. He hits it. A bouncer down over McQuinn's head. There's a throw to first to Baroy, and he gets away. He's safe. The runner, Cabaretta, goes around to third base. Now we're waiting for the official scorer, Billy Doyle, and the Pittsburgh Sun Telegraph to render his decision. That 
with the base hit and an error for Bobby Doerr of the Boston Red Sox playing second base. Musial bounced the ball over McQuinn's head out towards right field. Doerr went back field of the ball. Barrowe, the pitcher, came over to cover first, but Doerr's throw was wild and skidded off Barrowe's glove. Cavaretta, meanwhile, going around to third base and Musial safe at first. That's the first hit for the National Leaguers. Up is Walker Cooper. Inside, ball one, a fastball. One and nothing. The American League infield is playing back to the double play. They're not trying to cut off the run at the plate. Time is called for a moment. Cooper in the regular season hitting 305. One ball on Cooper. Cavaretta on third base. Musial on first. Roy takes a stretch. There's the pitch. It's low, a curveball, too low. Ball two. Roy is now on the spot. Not entirely his fault, though. That ball hit by Musial took a terrific bounce over McQuinn's head. Here's the pitch to Cooper. Inside, he drove him back. Three balls. The curve ball was too close. Cooper had to get out of the way. Three and nothing. Freddie Fitzsimmons, the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, coaching on third. Mike Gonzalez of the Cardinals, coaching over at first base. Three and nothing on the batter, Walker Cooper. On deck is Dixie Walker. Here's the pitch. And he hits it. A line drive going out into right field. It's taken by Stanley Spence. Here's the throw into the plate. And he is out. A double play. A double play retires the National League. A sensational double play. That had drama all the way. With a three and nothing count, nobody expected Walker Cooper to hit that ball because Barrowe was showing time for wildness. But Cooper hit a three and nothing pitch. Line to drive. Stayed at, straight at Stanley Spence in right field. The runner on third, Cabaretta, tried to score after the catch, and the right fielder spent through in a perfect strike, retired him at home for a double play. The National, no run, one hit, one man left, and one error by the American League. At the end of the first inning, the score is nothing to nothing. There's a major league outfielder who played 189 consecutive games without making an error. If you ask me, that's going some. But think of the amazing performance demanded of the folks who inspect Gillette Blue Blades. Millions and millions of blades are produced at shaving headquarters, but only perfect ones ever reach you. Seventeen separate inspections assure absolutely uniform quality. And then the Gillette Blue Blade has the sharpest, easiest shaving and longest lasting edges that science and skill can produce. So for the best looking shaves, the smoothest and most refreshing a man can have, always use today's Gillette Blue Blade in your Gillette razor. And now the first half of the second inning, and there was plenty of drama packed into both sides of that first inning. A real sensational inning, both pitchers being on the spot and both getting off. Kenny Keltner of the Cleveland Indians, the third baseman of the American Leaguers, is going to lead off against Bucky Walters, the best right-hander. Waller throws, and the ball is hit, going foul out into left field, going up into the stand. Strike one. Keltner is hitting 260 in the regular American League campaign. Bucky Walters, leading the National League on the mound, has won 14 and lost three. No score yet. That was a sensational inning, that first inning. One strike, here's the pitch. And it's a curve which gets the outside corner for strike two. Walters is very sharp with that hook. Nothing and two on Keltner. Standing midway in the batter's box. Outfield playing him around to the left. Wallers goes into his motion. Throws a hit down at shortstop. Out into left field for a hit. It's fielded and tossed back into the infield by Augie Galland for a single. Keltner drives one between the third baseman, Bob Elliott, and the shortstop, Marty Marion, for a hit. That's the third hit for the American League All Singles. Bobby Doerr of the Boston Red Sox whose home run broke up last year's All-Star game and won it for the American League is up. Midway in the batter's box, he bats right-handed. Door hitting 340 right now. There's the pitch. And he hits away, drives the ground ball down to Ryan at second. The players at first, he's out. The runner goes to second base. 
A slow roller was driven down to the second baseman, Connie Ryan. He had only one play to make. That was over to first. And Keltner went to second on the play with too slow a roller for a double play. Raleigh Hemsley coming up. The catcher for the New York Yankees, batting right-handed. On deck is catcher Hank Perroy. Hemsley hitting 264 in the campaign. Man in scoring position on second, Keltner. Here's the pitch. And he hits it, a ground ball down to Marion. Marion has it over to first. He's out, and the runner goes to third. Hemsley goes out, short to first for the second out. Keltner romps over to third base. Hank Baroy coming up. is a right-handed hitter. His mark in the regular season is 191. Two out, a man on third base. Bucky Wallers goes to his kerchief for a moment. Now gets ready to pitch again. No score yet. Quite a ball game, too. Plenty of excitement, plenty of tenseness. And now Wallers pitches with a windup. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses a low curve for strike one. Roy's a pretty hard hitter. Although his average isn't good, he drives a long ball. Strike one on him. Midway in the batter's box, the right-hand batter. Outfield playing him not very deep. Almost straight away. Wallers throws. Side on pitch up high. Ball one. One and one. One ball. One strike. Wallers getting the sign from Cooper. Here's the pitch. Curve is outside. Broke away. Two and one count. Two balls, one strike. Hank Perroy up. Kenny Keltner on third, hoping to come home at the first run of the game. Perroy looks out at the pitcher. Bands the bat around. Here it is. He drives it. A bouncer over as he pops. Out. Back to second. A throw by Ryan over to first. And the man is safe to run score. Great play that it was. It failed to get the pass. Perroy going down to first base. The batter, Perroy... Drove the ball over the pitcher's box behind second. Ryan, the second baseman, went back, made a backhand stab, a beautiful stop, threw to first, but too late to get Perroy. That's an infield hit, and scores Keltner with the first run of the game. The American League being out in front now, one to nothing. And that is the fourth hit off Walter. Thurman Tucker up. First time up, he was out, short to first. He swings and fouls it off down in the dirt beside home plate. One strike. Broy is on first. He's just driven in a run. Tucker bats left-handed. Outfield is dry to the right. Walter takes a stretch. The pitch. It's low. Ball one. One and one. A fastball below the knees. American League, you know, is one-eighth of these all-star contests to three for the National League. Roy leads off. Here's the pitch. Tucker hits it. A ground ball going foul down the first baseline. Two strikes. Out to one and two count. Brand new baseball is rubbed up by Bob Elliott, the third baseman. Elliott at third. Marion at short. Ryan at second. Cavaretta at first. Gallan and left. New Zealand center, Walker in right, Cooper catching, and Walters pitching. Second inning, American League, top half, leading one to nothing. Tucker, the leadoff man, up the pitch. He hits it, a drive going down to Ryan. Connie has it. Throw to first. He's out. Tucker ends the inning by going out second to first. So for the American League, they break the ice in the second inning. One run on two hits. Singles by Keltner and Baroy. Sandwiched in around a couple of infield outs. No errors by the National League and one man left on base. At the end of the first half of the second inning, the score is American League 1, the National League nothing. The National League is going to come up in the second inning with Dixie Walker of Brooklyn, Bob Elliott of Pittsburgh, Connie Ryan of the Boston Braves, and possibly Slats Marion of the St. Louis Cardinals if one or more of them should get on. Dixie Walker leading off is hitting 352 right now. 
Roy, who was on base, has gone into the American League dugout to sit down for just a moment before resuming his pitching chores in this last half of the second inning. Roy, of course, will work three innings. Who will succeed him on the mound is a moot question. And now we're going to pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is the WBBM Air Theater, Wrigley Building, Chicago 11. Last half of the second inning, American League 1, National League nothing, Dixie Walker. Batting 352 in the regular National League campaign, left-handed hitter, the power of the Brooklyn batting order coming up to bat. The outfield is going to play him straight away. American League outfield is Bob Johnson of Boston in left, Thurman Tucker of the White Sox in center, Stanley Spence of Washington in right field. Spence made that great throw to Nep Cavaretta at the plate to retire the side in the first inning. Keltner at third base, Stevens at short, Dora at second, McQuinn at first. Kemsley catching, Baroy pitching. Now we're all set. The National League is up to see if they can't get that run back. Walker up, Elliott on deck, Ryan waiting. Broy throws, a curveball is just off the outside corner, ball one. Fast curveball, failed to get the corner, and Broy's behind the hitter, one or nothing. Walker chokes up on the bat a little bit. Here's the pitch. Walker hits it right through the box, out to the center field for a hit. It's fielded by Tucker back to the infield, and Walker is safe at first base. Going up is for the hometown boy, Bob Elliott, the third baseman of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Gets a great ovation as he comes to the home plate. Walker is down on first base with the potential tying run. Elliott batting right-handed. Hitting 292 in the regular campaign. There's a throw to first, the runners back safely. The last half of the second inning, the American League leading one to nothing. Elliott holds the bat long. The pitch is fouled off just below it. Bouncing on the screen. Strike one. The crowd sort of sings in unison with the ball as it rolls down the screen. Maybe you could hear it in the background. One strike on Elliott. Roy stretches. Throws. He hits it. A bounce it down to Keltner. The play at second. The fourth out. No play at first. One out. Elliott safe at first on a fourth out. Elliott drove a hard ground to high down to Kenny Keltner, the third baseman, who threw down to Bobby Dora, forcing out Walker at second base for a fourth out. Elliott was safe at first. There was no throw. Tony Ryan of the Boston Braves up. Batting right-handed. Ryan, a 289 batter. Outfield plays him a bit to the left, just a stride or so. One out and still a man on first base. Bob Elliott on first. Roy takes a stretch throws. An inside curve. Ball one. Failed to get the corner with it. Marty Marion, the great shortstop of the Cardinals, is on deck. Followed by the pitcher, Bucky Walters. Ryan waiting. A leisurely throw to first base. Elliott's back in plenty of time. Roy just thought he was getting off a little bit too far and tried to keep him back. Elliott leads off. There's the pitch. A low curve outside. Ball two. That broke away sharply. Two or nothing. American League infield showing plenty of pepper, talking it up. Elliott leads off. There's the pitch. Ryan swings and misses. A sharp curve. One strike. Two and one now. Good around at that one. Capacity crowd out here at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. Roy throws. He swings again and misses. A sinker ball that time, and it's two and two. Ryan went around the second time in a row. Count all even. Elliott on first base. Roy starts to take the stretch and then gets down off the hill. Now he's back up. There's the pitch. 
And it's an inside curve. Ball three. Failed to get the corner. Three and two. A full count. Now we'll see if Elliott goes down on this one. He's on first base. Three and two. One out. There's the pitch. There he goes down. The ball is hit foul. Back in the screen. Good run was on. Three and two count yet. Elliott all the way down to second. Retraces his steps to first base. Roy gets a new baseball and rubs it up. Connie Ryan, former giant, now at Boston, up at bat. There's a throw to first. Elliott gets back in plenty of time. Now Baroy takes the stretch again. Here it is. There goes the runner down, and he hits it. A high fly ball out into center field. Tucker is going way back, way back, and makes the catch. And Elliott goes back to first base. Two out. On a three and two count. Ryan flies deep to center field. Elliott has to go back to first, and now we have two out, and Elliott on at first base. Marty Marion, the Cardinals' great shortstop, batting right-handed up at bat. Second All-Star game. He's hitting 253 in the regular season. Roy looking around, seeing that the field is a set, they play Marion to the left. There's the pitch. A strike, a curve, got the outside corner, a sharp bender. Strike one. Roy looks over at the runner at first base, Bob Elliott. Now Hank takes the stretch. Last Marion waits. Here's the pitch. And he hits it. A drive going high to Bobby Doerr, right on the line. A blooper. Started high and then came down into Bobby Doerr's hands, ending the inning. National League in the second inning. No runs, one hit, one left, and no errors by the American League. At the end of the second inning, the score is... American League one, National League nothing. You've seen a base runner break from first on the windup, only to be nailed at second, the victim of a pitch out. Somebody outguessed him. Well, when it comes to outguessing tough beard, Gillette lather shaving cream is right in there too. You see, it's water that softens wiry whiskers for quick, easy shaving. And it's water that Gillette lather holds a barrel of. Yes, sir, this cream holds water as a sponge does and releases it freely, soaking every bristle through and through. Not only that, but Gillette lather stays wet on your face, keeping your stubble properly conditioned for your razor all the time you're shaving. Men, enjoy slick, easy shaves, smooth-looking and refreshing. Ask for Gillette lather shaving cream, only a quarter. Now the top half of the third inning... Stanley Spence of Washington up at bat. First pitch by Wallers is outside for ball one. Spence in the first inning was out to the first baseman. Cabaret unassisted. Wallers goes into his motion. The pitch. A curve gets the inside corner. Strike one. Nice graceful curve. Count is one and one. Wallers throws again. And he hits it. A line drive going out into right field. It's safe. It's fielded out there by Dixie Walker and tossed back in the infield for a single. Spence, leading off the third inning, gets base hit number five off Bucky Walters. Walters has struck out one. He hasn't walked any. George McQuinn, who's single in the first inning, is up. Bob Elliott, third baseman of the National Leaguers, moves in, sort of expecting a bunt. Here's the pitch. And he holds the swing away, but doesn't swing. It's ball one outside. He didn't choke up to punt on that. First half of the third, the score is one to nothing. Favor the American League. Bucky Walters pitching and Walker Cooper catching for the National. Spence at first, McQuinn up. He takes it for a strike. Fast one down the middle, one and one. Outfield a stride to the right for McQuinn. Augie Galan in left, Stan Musial in center, Dixie Walker in right. Walrus takes the stretch. Here's the pitch. Curve outside. Ball two. Tex Houston is warming up for the American League and Ken Raffensperger for the National. They'll probably go in in the fourth inning. Here's the pitch. And he hits it about the back to the box. Waller has it to play at second. The fourth out. No play at first base. 
Quick thinking, quick failing by Bucky Walters. Retire Stanley Spence at second base on a throw to Marty Marion for a fourth out. But there was no play at first base. McQuinn getting over there on a fielder's choice. Fourth out. Vern Stevens, who also single in the first inning, is up. St. Louis Brown shortstop batting right-handed. Second all-star game for Stephens. One out, one on. Waller is getting the sign from Walker Cooper. Takes the stretch. McQuinn leads off. There's the pitch. And he hits it. A high foul coming back here. Too far back for the catcher to handle. It bounces on the screen. Strike one on the batter. In case you folks don't know it, there's the longest distance between home plate and the backstop. Here in Fort Field in Pittsburgh of any park in either league, 110 feet is the distance from the plate to the backstop. That's quite a run. One strike. Pitch. Stephen hits it. A long drive out into left. Curving foul. Over a bit. It would have been over the scoreboard for a home run. It was that far. But it curved over and went into foul territory. Strike two. Waller is out ahead of the batter. Strike two. No balls. Quinn on at first base. Bob Johnson on deck. Outfield around to the left for Stephen. Waller is getting the sign. Throws, and it's hit. A long drive curving foul out into left again. Stephen has his eye on that scoreboard, which is located out near the left field foul line in fair territory. The last two balls he hit far enough, but curving balls that went foul. Incidentally, in the batting practice, Stephens was rifling them over the scoreboard. Two strikes. McQuinn on at first. Wallace throws, and he hits a foul. Sharp curve. He just got a piece of it. Hit it into the dirt by home plate. Still strike two. Waller's control has been very good. Walker Cooper squats down to give the sign. George McQuinn leading off. Burns Stevens up. Waller throws. A curve is hit high near the mound. It's taken by Walker Cooper. A throw to first. And he's out. A beautiful play by Walker Cooper. That was a high bounder between home plate and the pitcher's box. Cooper got out there very fast and snapped the throw down to first base. Cabaretta to retire the batter. McQuinn goes to second on the play. A very close play at first base. Two out. Bob Johnson was struck out in the first inning is up. Johnson is playing in his fifth all-star game. Regular season mark is 318. Man on second in scoring position. That's McQuinn. Waller stretches. The pitch is hit down to third base. Elliott has it. The throw to first. He's out. Johnson grounded out to the third base and Bob Elliott ending the inning. For the American League in the top half of the third, no runs, one hit, one man left, and no errors for the National League. At the end of the first half of the third inning, the score is American League one, the National League nothing. And that, I take it, will end Bucky Walters' pitching chores on the mound for the National Leaguer. Bucky pitched three full innings, gave up one run, five hits. He struck out one and didn't walk anyone. Ken Raffensperger, a left-hander from the Phillies, is warming up down the home club bullpen in deep right field. Down the other bullpen, Tex Houston of the Boston Red Sox. A fast right-hander is warming up and probably will replace Perui. Manager Mel Ott of the New York Giants is coming up. He's going to pinch hit for Walter. Ott is getting a great hand from the crowd. Listen. Ott is the fourth of home runs in the major leagues this year. He's hit 20 home runs so far. His batting mark is 313. He's playing in his 11th All-Star game. He didn't get in all of them, but he was on the squad 11 times. He came up in last year's game as a pinch hitter. He's going to bat for Bucky Walter. Jamel out of the New York Giants. One of the great stars of the National Pastime. And the Phillies is warming up down the home club bullpen in deep right field. 
Down on the other bullpen, Tex Houston of the Boston Red Sox. A fast right-hander is warming up and probably will replace Perroy. Manager Mel Ott of the New York Giants is coming up. He's going to pinch hit for Walter. Ott is getting a great hand from the crowd. Listen. home run so far. His batting mark is 313. He's playing in his 11th All-Star game. He didn't get in all of them, but he was on the squad 11 times. He came up in last year's game as a pinch hitter. He's going to bat for Bucky Walter. Manager Mellot of the New York Giants. One of the great stars of the national pastime by any comparison. Hot bats left-handed. He's facing Hank Perroy of the New York Yankees, who was pitching his third and final inning for the American Leaguer. Roy throws. Ott hits it. A line drive going deep out into center field. The center field of Tucker comes over and makes the catch. Ott hitting the first ball. Line deep to center field. Tucker went over to his right and pulled it down. One out. Top of the batting order up now. Augie Galan, the left fielder, the Brooklyn player. He was out third to first in the first inning. And batting left-handed. Hank Perroy goes into his motion. Pitch. A low curve gets away from Hemsley. It's ball one. One nothing. Galan has played in two previous All-Star games. Up five times. He got one hit. Three twenty-two batter in the regular campaign. One ball, no strike. One out, nobody on. Perroy throws. And the ball is hit foul, going into the stands behind home plate. Count is now one and one. We keep telling you this lineup from time to time because there will be changes, and we realize that some folks are turning in late. Bob Johnson in left field, Tucker in center, Spence in right for the American League. Roy throws, the ball is hit, a high fly ball out at the center field. Tucker goes way over to his right and pulls it down. Two in a row for Thurman Tucker of the White Sox out there. Two out, nobody on. Kenny Keltner of Cleveland is playing third. Vern Stevens of St. Louis short. Bobby Doerr of the Red Sox second. And George McQuinn of the Browns first base. Hemsley and Baroy of the Yankees, the battery. Baroy pitching, Hemsley catching. Up at bat is Phil Cavaretta, who walked in the first inning, out at home. He hits the first pitch, a pop fly, going into foul territory near third. Keltner comes over, but it goes up in the stand. Strike one. Cavaretta is playing in his first All-Star game. Left-handed batter. Strike one on him. Roy looks to Hemsley for the sign. Goes into that willowy motion of his. Snaps it in. Strike. A fastball. Knee high. Very fast. Two strikes. No ball. Cavaretta stands deep in the batter's box. Back near the catcher. Outfield plays him straight away. The pitch up high, ball one, fast ball, one and two. The American League got a run on the second inning, so in the last of the third, they're still leading one to nothing. Two out, nobody on. Cabaretta of the Cubs up at pass. Broly whips it in, and it's low. Ball two. Fast ball, fail to stay up. Two and two. Two out, none on. It's Baroy in his motion, the pitch. And it's low. Another fastball below the knees. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Baroy has walked one man. Now with Caparetta in the first inning. Now Phil with a three and two count. Wait. Baroy throws, and the ball is hit foul. Way out deep in left field. And still a full count as a new ball goes out to Baroy. Outfield straight away, fairly deep. Raffensperger, who will go into pitch for the National League, has finished warming up and now in the dugout resting. Roy again goes into his motion. Three and two count, the pitch is hit foul. Going up in the stands behind third. So another brand new white baseball goes out to Baroy. 
This is the All-Star game between the National League All-Stars and the American League All-Stars at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh before a capacity crowd. Roy again in his motion. Throws, and he follows it back. Three and two count yet on Phil Cabaretta. On deck is Stanley Musial. All right, so get it right. Roy gets a sign from Hemsley. National League, one run in arrears. Here's the pitch. And he hits it, foul again. Going up in the stands, behind third. He's fouling them off now. A three and two count. Cabaret on the regular campaign. Getting 296. Now we're set again. Roy winds up, snaps it in, and he hits it. A drive going out to the left field that falls safe for a base hit. Gets the race from Johnson and rolling to the fence. Cabaretta is on his way down to second. He rounds second. He's on his way over to third. There's the relay, and he slides in safely. Johnson, the left fielder, never did catch up with it, and it rolled to the fence. Bouncing off the sign out there, which says, by war bond. Cabaret around the bases to third and slid in a beautiful hook slide, and he's safe with a three-base hit. That's the third hit off for Roy, and brings up Stanley Musial. This is the second time that Cabaret got around to third base. The last time he was doubled up at home on a double play. That was in the first inning. Musial up. Musial got an infield hit in the first inning. Broy throws, and he hits it foul. An outside curve. Strike one. Foul to tag. Musial leading the National League with base hits 104, with two base hits 27, and in batting is marked 366. Cavaretta on third, two out. Here's the pitch. It's low. Ball one. Curve ball came in, but too low. One and one on Stanley Musial, M-U-S-I-A-L. Cavaretta on third base. Two out, the last of the third. Barrow, throws, and he hits it. A bounce down to third. Keltner has it. The throw to first. He's out. Kenny Keltner, the third baseman, makes a fine play on a slow roller by Musial and throws him out, ending the inning. In the National League, the third inning, no runs, one hit, one left, and no errors by the American League. At the end of three innings, the score is the American League one, the National League nothing. Some batters have a free and graceful swing that makes hitting look easy. Others make it look like the hardest work in the world. Fans, there's an easy and a hard way of doing most everything. In shaving, the easy way is the all Gillette way. Yes, shaving's a sense if you prepare your whiskers with Gillette shaving cream and breathe through them with today's Gillette Blue Blade. What shaves you get. How smooth and comfortable your face looks and feels. Now there are two Gillette shaving creams, lather and brushless. Choose the kind you prefer. Both are tops in their fields. Extremely fast-acting, thorough-going, beard-softening aids that really do the trick. Ask your dealer for Gillette shaving cream, lather or brushless. Only a quarter. And now the top of the fourth inning, Ken Raffensperg, or a left-hander of the Philadelphia Phillies, is taking the mound for the National Leaguer. Raffensperger has been in 19 games. He has won eight and lost nine so far this season from York, Pennsylvania. Coming up to bat for the American Leaguer is Kenny Keltner, the third baseman. Raffensperger, southpaw. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. Three-quarter speed pitch, which failed to get the corner. Keltner is single and scored a run in the second inning. The lone run of the game so far is the top of the fourth inning. American Leaguers won, the National nothing. 
Raffensperger throws, and the ball is hit high over the infield. First baseman Phil Cabaretta is waving everyone else away and takes it for the out. Keltner pops out to the first baseman. One out. Bobby Dora of the Boston Red Sox coming up. Playing second base, he was out. Second to first in the second inning. This is the third All-Star game for Dora. He's been up seven times, got two hits. One of them a home run, which won last year's game. Played at Philadelphia. Raffensperger throws. A strike. A fastball on the outside corner, knee high. Dora batting right-handed, midway in the batter's box. Ken Raffensperger of Philadelphia, working for the National Leaguers. A curveball, he swings and misses. Strike two. Dora went around on an inside roundhouse, missed it. Curveball that came in on him. Broke around the handle, failed to connect. Two strikes. One out, nobody on. Walker Cooper catching, gives a sign. The pitch way out. Ball one, fastball outside. One and two. There'll be a change of umpires at the end of four and a half innings. They'll change position. Raffensperger, slim left-hander, goes into his motion. The pitch, sidearm pitch outside. Ball two, a fastball that was. Two and two. On deck is Raleigh Hemsley. Walker Cooper of St. Louis squats down to give the sign. Raffensperger throws, and he fouls it off. The foul, bouncing off the umpire's mask, ends up in the National League dugout. Two balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Outfield around to the left for Dorr. With Lanier out of action with a sore arm, Max Lanier. Ken Raffensperger is the only south for the National League has tonight. And they're using him right now. The pitch, a slow ball, driven foul, coming back. He pulled the string on that one, Dorr fouled it back. Count stays at two and two. Joe Cronin, the manager of the Boston Red Sox, Dora's manager, shouts encouragement to him from the first baseline. Arthur Fletcher of the Yankees coaching at third base. Cronin, although one of the best pinch hitters in the game, is not eligible for pinch hitting tonight. He's not on the all-star squad as a player. Here's the pitch. And he struck him out. Dora went down swinging on a sharp curve. Two out. Hemsley up. Hemsley was out. Marion to Cavaretta, short to first in the second inning. That's right-handed. Crowds the plate just a little bit. Outfield plays him a stride to the left, fairly deep. Raffensperger has retired two men in a row. Now throws. Fastball outside, ball one. One and nothing count on Hemsley. Raffensperger again goes into his motion. He throws. The ball is hit foul, going in the stands behind first base. One and one count now. One ball, one strike. Two out, nobody on. First of the fourth. American League out in front. One to nothing. One big run so far, separating the team. Raffensperger goes into his motion. Pitch, and he hits it. A drive right in. by Connie Ryan, the second baseman of the National Leaguers. Raleigh Hemsley drove a line drive towards right center. Ryan, doing the Indian rope trick, went way up in the air, hauled it down for the out. A great play, one of the finest tonight. So the American League is retired in order in the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. And at the middle of the fourth inning, the score is American League 1, National League nothing. We all know that millions of Americans have gone thousands of miles to many distant places, doing their valiant part in winning this war. These men go wherever they're needed, and wherever they go, they do more than their part. Now here is a chance for certain men to meet a special crisis right here at home, a call to a job on which the fate of the men over there depends. Listen carefully. Today, 20,000 men are urgently needed to work for at least 90 days in foundries. 
job is to help make castings for engines, heavy trucks, and armament. Experience is desirable, but not necessary. Men, help out on the special call for foundry workers. This job is a vital one. It's an emergency. If you can step into this breach on this, go to your local U.S. Employment Service office or your local War Manpower Commission first thing tomorrow. Release from your present job will be obtained. Here is one of the greatest opportunities American men at home will have to help win the war. Now there's a new battery, an H battery in there for the American League. Tex Houston of the Boston Red Sox is going to do the pitching, and Frankie Hayes of Philadelphia will be the catcher. First man up for the National League, Walker Cooper. Houston throws a fastball. He swings and misses for strike one. Tex Houston has won 13 and lost three this year, leading the American League. A strike, a fastball on the outside corner, strike two. Nothing into the count on Cooper, leading off for the National League in the last of the four. Cooper hit into a double play last time. He struck him out. Cooper goes down swinging on an outside curve. Houston being very fast at this point. One out. Dixie Walker up. Walker single in the second inning. Forced out at second base by Elliott. Walker batting left-handed. Texas in of Boston is pitching, and Frankie Hayes of Philadelphia now catching for the American League in place of Barroi and Hensley, respectively. Houston goes into his motion. Walk away. The pitch, a fastball inside. Strike one. Got the corner. One strike on Walker. There's the pitch. And he hits it. A long drive point. He's out into right field. Spence goes back close to the wall and pulls it down. The longest hit ball of the night, but it's out. Walker flies deep to Stanley Spence in right field for the second out. Brings up the Pittsburgh of Bob Elliott getting a nice hand. Frank Perroi, who pitched the first three innings for the American League, gave three hits. Walked one, didn't strike out anyone, and they didn't score off him. Two out. Elliott up. You control, and he hits it. A fly ball into center field. Thurman Tucker waiting for it. He's got it. Boy, that was a quick inning. Three up, three down. Elliott flying out to center. The National League in the fourth inning. They go out in order for the first time. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. At the end of the fourth inning, the score is American League one, National League nothing. It's a smart bit of strategy when a runner steals third base and after that scores on a fly ball or an infield out. Now, if you follow me, Gillette Brushless helps you steal a march on tough beard just as smoothly as that. Water, of course, is the number one beard softener. So the trick is to pull moisture-resisting oily film from your whiskers so that water can soak in. Gillette Brushless does that in jig time and blankets plenty of water against the base of every bristle. In no time at all, your beard is perfectly conditioned for smooth, comfortable shaving. Fans to get slick-looking, refreshing shaves, double-quick, ask your dealer for Gillette Brushless, only a quarter. And now we're going to pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The WBBM Air Theater, Wrigley Building, Chicago. The time is one minute past nine. First half of the fifth inning, Tex Houston leading off the American League. First pitch to him is strike one as he fouls it off. Ken Raffensperger, a southpaw, is on the mound for the National League. Houston bats right-handed. Outfield stride to the left. Raffensperger delivers. Too close. Ball one. Missed the corner with that one. One and one. Raffensperger getting the sign from Walker Cooper. Goes into his motion and throws. A slow ball is driven right at the second base from Connie Ryan. He bobbles it. It rolls out into right field and it's fielded by Walker back into the infield. That scored is an error for Connie Ryan. It's an amazing thing. Just a moment ago, Ryan was a hero when he cut off a base hit with a great play. Now he makes an error. That's all in the game. 
Houston is safe at first base on Ryan's error. It was a low line drive, hit right at him. It bounced in front of him, caromed off his knee out into right field. Up is the leadoff man, Thurman Tucker, who is hitless in two tries. Batting left-handed. Raffensperger takes the stretch throws. The ball is bunted foul down the third baseline. Strike one. One strike on Tucker, who was out short to first in the first and second to first in the second. Heck Houston on at first base. Raffensperger getting the sign from Big Walker Cooper. Takes a stretch. There's the pitch. And he punts it right down to third. Elliott has it. The plate at second. He's out. It's a fourth out of second base. A good play by Bob Elliott, the third baseman. He threw it down to Marion, who covers. So it's no sacrifice. Tucker is safe at first on a fourth out. And Houston goes out at second. Third to short. Elliott to Marion. One out. Stanley Spence of Washington coming up. The right fielder was out to the first baseman, unassisted in the first. Single and was out at second on the third. One out of two so far. Bats left-handed. Raffensperger takes the stretch. Spence waits. The pitch. Strike. A curveball. Got the outside corner. Raffensperger throws plenty of curves. Spence is playing in his first All-Star game. Cut off a run with a great play, a great catch, and a great throw on the first inning. The man on third, a line drive was hit at him, and he threw out the man at the plate when he caught it. Now he waits. Throw to first. Not in time. Tucker back safely. The American League is leading one to nothing as the ball game moves along. First half of the fifth now. Here's the pitch. A curveball fails to get the corner this time. It's ball one, one and one. One ball, one strike. Bucky Waller started on the mound for the National League. Pitched three innings, gave up one run. Ken Raffensperger came in at the start of the fourth. They failed to score off him. Now we're in the fifth inning. One out, one on. Fence up. The pitch. Foul back. Strike two. Foul it right back. One and two the count. Thurman Tucker of the Chicago White Sox is on first base. Joe Cronin of Boston coaching at first. Arthur Fletcher of the Yankees coaching at third. The umpires. George Barr of the National League at home plate. Barry of the American at first. Spears of the National at second. And Hubbard of the American at third. The runner leads off. Raffensperger taking plenty of time throws. The ball is hit. A line drive going out into center field, and it falls safe in front of Musial. There goes the runner. Tucker around a third. On the throw. The batter goes into second. He's out. On that play, Spence drove a single into center field. Musial fielded the ball on one hop. Whipped a throw over to third, trying to catch the flying Tucker. The throw was too late. It was cut off by the third baseman, Elliott, who whipped it down to Connie Ryan at second. And Ryan put the ball on Spence, trying to go to second on the throw, Spence being out. That scored eight to five to four. Makes it two out with a man on third and brings up George McQuinn. That's the first hit off Raffensperger. Strike one on McQuinn, a curveball getting the outside corner. Strike one. Walker Cooper gives a sign. Tucker is now on third base. There are two out. The pitch. Strike two. Fastball coming in knee high on the inside corner. Raffensperger is mighty sharp. Two strikes on the batter. Playing McQuinn a stride to the right. There it is. Outside. Ball one. He missed the corner with that fastball. On deck is Vern Stephens. <laughs> Raffensperger taking his time. Tucker moves in. Here's the pitch. And he gets him and out on strike. A sharp curve 
Got the outside corner, and McQuinn is a strikeout victim. The American League in the fifth inning. No runs, one hit, one left, and one error by the National League. At the end of the first half of the fifth inning, the score is the American League one, the National League nothing. And now it's my pleasure to bring in on our Cavalcade Sports broadcast my coach sports dealer working with me on the New York Yankees, New York Giants baseball games, Bill Slater. Come on in here, Bill, it's your ball game. Thank you, Don, and good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. The umpires change around now as we go into the second half of the ball game. Uh, moving to the plate now is Big Cal Hubbard of the American League. Umpiring at first is Ziggy Sears of the National. Umpiring at second will be Charlie Berry of the American League, and umpiring at third will be George Barr of the National League. It's the last half of the fifth inning, and the National Leaguers are coming in here trying to tie up this ball game if they possibly can. The American Leaguers are ahead of them by a score of one to nothing. On the mound is Big Tex Houston. He's a big foot, six feet, three and a half inches in height, the guy is. And he's a very strong man on that mound. This is Texas' uh, fourth year in the majors. All of them have been spent with the Boston Red Sox. He has been on the all-star squad now. This is his third year. Behind the plate is Frankie Hayes, a veteran of all-star competition. Great catcher of the Philadelphia Athletics. Up batting first now is Connie Ryan. He takes the first pitch for a call strike. Strike one on Ryan. Ryan flied out to center his first time up. Swings on the next one. Strike two. 0-2 oh is the count. Tommy is a New Orleans, Louisiana boy. Been two and a half years in the majors. This is his first all-star game, of course. Houston winds up. Shoots it in there. Ryan takes it low for ball one. One and two. Frankie Hayes and he's crouched now. Gives the signal to Tex Houston. The wind up. The pitch is low again. Ball two. Two and two. Houston trying to get him with a curve that broke away and a little low. Ryan, a right-handed hitter, stands square away in the batter's box. The pitch, he swings on it, and it's a hit. Falling out to center field, fielded out there by Thurman Tucker, tossed back in. And it's a hit. A hit off to Tex Houston. The second hit they have collected off of Houston. The first hit off of Houston, rather. And it puts the man on first to lead things off for the National League in the last half of the fifth inning. Ryan on first and Slats Marion up. Slats is the tall, gangling star shortstop of the St. Louis Tide. He's a right-handed hitter. He lined out to Connie Ryan on a sensational play his first time up tonight. Attempts to bump the first one, but it's wide for ball one. The American League infield is on the move. Keltner charging in from third. Georgie McQuinn coming in from first. One and another count. And now Tex Houston calls time while he bends down and laces up his shoe. Can you tie that? That's precisely what he's doing. Man on first. Nobody out. Last half of the fifth inning. National League trailing one to nothing, but trying to make a comeback here. Slats Marion up. He sets himself to bunt, but takes for ball two. And he's got Tex Houston guessing. He's ahead of Houston. Ryan leading off first. You haven't heard much cheering tonight. This is a National League city, of course. And they're all waiting for a chance to do some barking about the National League. The pitch to Marion is inside. The big tall boy leans back and it's ball three. Three and all the count. Frankie Hayes walks out in front of the plate, tossing the ball back to Tex Houston. Marion, the count 3-0 and on him, steps out of the batter's box, is back in again now. Stands with a fairly wide stance, big, tall, good-looking athlete. The pitch to him is a call strike, the automatic one, he took it, and the count is 3-1. and one. Rip Sewell is starting to warm up out in the National League bullpen. The pitch to Marion is called strike two, and the count rises to three and two. Now the string runs out. Man on first, nobody down, count three and two on the batter. Big Martin Whiteford Lance Marion. Here's the pitch. He swings on it, pops it up foul. Too far back for Frankie Hayes to get it. Rolls off the screen, and the crowd gives it the play. 
seems to be a good old Pittsburgh custom here. When the ball lands up on the screen and rolls slowly off by the whoop until the ball falls off. Three and two is the count. Time has been called now while a ball that gets away from one of the players in the bullpen rolls out on the field and has to be removed. Here's the big three and two pitch now to Martin Marion. Man on first, nobody down. The pitch, he swings on it and he struck him out. And as he does, Ryan goes down, stealing. And he's on second. That's the second strikeout for Houston and the first stolen base lead. The pinch hitter is coming in now for Ken Raffensperger. We'll see who it is in just a moment. Looks like Big Bill Nicholson, but I'm not sure. It's Big Bill Nicholson, the switch hitter, the big right fielder of the Chicago Cubs, who's going to come in here to pinch hit for Raffensperger in the last half of the fifth inning. Bill Nicholson hitting at 287 in the regular season. He has batted in 15 runs. He's batted in 50 runs, rather, and has knocked himself out 15 homers so far this season. This is the fourth all-star squad he's been on. He's a left-handed hitter. And he's crouched, takes the first pitch from Tex Houston inside for ball one. One out, man on second in scoring position. Bill Nicholson up. The pitch, a call strike over the inside corner. Houston was very sharp with that one. A fast-breaking curve. Fool Nicholson. Nicholson's called a swish hitter, you know, because just before the pitcher delivers the ball, he swishes that bat back and forth across the plate. Ryan on second. The pitch is swung off and struck down the right field line, and it's safe. Here comes Ryan around the score. Nicholson is heading for second and pulls up a second with a double. Coming in as a pinch hitter for Ken Raffensperger, the pitcher delivers the telling blow. It was a hot liner just inside the foul line, going down the right field line. The field is back in out there by Stan Spence, but by that time, Tommy Ryan was across the plate, and big Bill Nicholson, feeling obviously very happy, is jumping down, up and down out there off second. And the game is tied up, one apiece. Now the plate umpire. Asked to have the ball tossed on. He wants to take a look at it. And Hal Newhauser goes to work in the bullpen for the American League. And Bob Muncreep also. So you'll have Newhauser, a left-hander, warming up, and Bobby Mun Muncreep, a right-hander. So one or the other of those boys will probably see service here. It's the last half of the fifth, and the National League has tied up the ball game. Up next is Augie Galan, left-handed hitter. Takes the first one for a call strike. Augie is a Berkeley, California chap. He's with the Dodgers. His third All-Star game. He was here in the All-Star game back in 36 with Chicago. Swings on the next the ground ball. And it goes through in the center field for a hit here is Phil Nicholson coming in to score. The land banged a ground single back over the box. It caromed off the glove of the shortstop, Vern Stevens, who tried to make a play on it. He could not hold it. And Big Bill Nicholson turned his way all the way in from second in the National League, goes ahead. One out. Galan on first and two runs in. That's three hits off the of Tex Houston. Up next is Phil Cabaretta. He's had a walk and a triple tonight. The pitch inside, ball one. Cabaretta has been around to third base twice tonight. Didn't score either time. First time he walked and moved around there on a hit. And the next time he banged himself out a triple. The count is ball two. As Cabaretta would not be fooled by one that almost nicked the inside corner. Houston, Tex Houston of the Red Sox working on the mound, having himself some trouble here in the last half of the fifth inning. Two runs across on a single, a double, and a stolen base two singles, a double, and a stolen base. And 
line up now is Phil Cavaretta. He takes the next one for ball three. The count is three and oh. Houston kicks up the dirt on the mound. Here's the pitch. The land leading off first, and it's inside, and he walks it. That's the second time tonight that Phil Cabaretta of the Chicago Cubs with a mighty good eye for the ball has been walked. The other time, he banged out a triple. It puts Cabaretta on first, moves Galland down to second. One out, two runs in. And the National League is ahead, going into the lead here in the last half of the fifth inning. Now Hayes goes back to talk things up with Tex Houston, and he's ready to go again. As stepping into the plate is Stan Musial, who was born in Denora, Pennsylvania, not far from Pittsburgh here. Big Stan's left-handed hitter. He's had one hit tonight and grounded out once. He leads the National League in batting and in hit production. Takes the first pitch for a call strike. Houston was very sharp with the curve over the outside corner. Big Stan Musial, one of the stars of that card aggregation. In here tonight under his manager, Billy Southwood. The pitch is swung on. It's a ground ball. Down to second. It's fielded by Gore. The throw to first. It's not in time as the ball is dropped by the first baseman, George McQuinn, and the bases are loaded. It's an error on the throw. baseman. The error, rather, was on the first baseman, not on the throw. The music goes on by an error. Cabaretta moves to second. Galan gets himself down to third. And the bases are but full. Full of National League. And they've scored two runs in this big last half of the fifth. Up next is big Walter Cooper. He slid out once, hitting into a double play, and struck out once. Big right-handed hitter. And they're ready to go. Swings on the first. The ground ball through for a hit. In the score comes with the land. Round and third coming at the score. Cabaretta and the play is at the plate. And he's out. He's out at the plate. It was a hit by Walker Cooper. It drove in Augie Galland from third. Phil Cabaretta tried to score from second. But a beautiful throw by Bob Johnson from out in left field, cutting down at the plate, and that's the second time tonight that Cabaretta's been cut down at the plate. And believe me, boy, he does not like the decision of the plate umpire big Cal Hubbard. And Freddie Fitzsimmons is coming in to put up a big argument for it. But big Cal Hubbard, who is big enough and a good enough umpire to withstand anything, seems to be taking it all very cool. But Cabaretta is out at the plate, the land scoring on Walker Cooper's single between third and short into left field. Musial moved himself down to third on the play. Cabaretta out at the play. Now there's still continued discussion down here, and Billy Southworth has come out to play his respect, pay his respects to the plate up by Cal Hubbard. But despite it all and all the discussion, Cabaretta is still out. Second time tonight that American League outfielder has thrown Phil Cabaretta out at the plate. Cabaretta in the first inning when he tried to score after a fly ball was caught by Stan Spence out and right. Now he attempted to score from second on a single by Walker Cooper and was thrown out at the plate by Bobby Johnson, the left fielder. Up next is Dixie Walker. Two out, men on first and third. Houston stretches, delivers, and swings on it, and it's a hit. Out into right field. Musial is coming in to score the fourth run of the inning. Cooper stopped that second. five off of Tex Houston, and it is run number four for the National Leaguers in this big last half of the fifth inning. And I think we're going to have a relief pitcher come in here. Time has been called. Hayes is going out to the mound to talk to Tex Houston. And it looks like Bob Muncrete of the St. Louis Browns riding in toward the mound as Tex Houston of the Red Sox is knocked out of the box in a big Last half of the fifth inning rally by the National League. 
It's Moncrief coming in. This is Moncrief's first all-star appearance. He has won eight and lost four so far this season. Big right-hander is Moncrief. Bob Moncrief from Medill, Oklahoma. Six feet one, weighs 190. This is his sixth year with St. Louis. He was twice sent back to the minors after he's first time he came up in 37. He went back to San Antonio and Hollywood. Came back up at the Browns and he stuck. And here he is tonight in the All-Star game. Houston goes out after giving up five hits, striking out two men. And four runs crossed on him in the last half of the fifth inning here. And the situation at the moment is that there is a man on first, Dixie Walker, who has just driven in a run. And on second is Walker Cooper, who drove in a, one, a run a moment ago. And Moncrief is taking his warm-up pitches. Ready to step in there to bat against him is Bob Elliott, the Pirates' third sacker, who is playing at third base tonight, much to the delight of the Pittsburgh fans, who are crammed into these stands here in this 12th annual All-Star Classic, being played here at historic old Fort Field, named for one of the Indian fighting generals of early American days here at the headwaters of the Ohio. Stepping up now is Bobby Elliott. Bob Moncrief is ready to go on the mound. Hayes is catching him. Two out, then on first and second, four runs in. Moncrief looks at second, stretches, delivers, and it's hit up high and foul, going over toward the stands, down the first baseline, falling in for strike one. New ball tossed out. Walker leading off first, and Walker Cooper leading off second. One, two, three, four runs in this big last half of the fifth. And Frankie Hayes, very astute catcher for the American Leaguers, walked out to the mound to pass on some advice to Bobby Muncrief. M-U-N-C-R-I-E-F. Muncrief pitching. He's the third American League pitcher of the night. Hank Roy started things off going very smoothly for three innings. Tex Houston had trouble in the last of the fifth. Taken out. There he is, ready to go. Count on Walker on uh, the batter. Elliott is 0-1. Right-handed hitter is Elliott. Swings on this one, lifts it up high, and it's going out in foul territory. Racing for it is the left fielder, and under it, making a very nice catch, is Bobby Johnson, the left fielder of the American Leaguers, and that retires the side. Elliott fouling out to the left fielder. In the last half of the fifth inning, four runs for the National League on one, two, three, four, five hits, one of them a double by Bill Nicholson. At the end of the fifth inning, the score is National League four, American League won. Iron Man McGinnity, they called him, and with plenty of reason. He pitched and won both ends of three doubleheaders in a 30-day period. Later, he pitched and won a doubleheader at the age of 54. In my book, that's a story of keenness and stamina, qualities that win, whether you're talking about athletes or razor blades. Don told you that today's Gillette Blue Blade has the sharpest, smoothest finished edges ever honed. Now I want to add that those edges are also hard enough to cut glass. That means that they stay keen for one comfortable, good-looking shave after another. So it gets down to this. Today's Gillette Blue Blade gives you smoother, pleasanter shaves, and more of them, because it's keener and far more durable than other blades. If you haven't tried this finer blade, you've a very enjoyable surprise coming. Ask your dealer for Gillette Blue Blades. At the start of the sixth inning, there are two changes in the lineup of the National Leaguers. Whitey Kurowski of the St. Louis Cards replaces Bob Elliott of the Pirates at third base. And coming to the mound now is Rip Sewell, the Ephus ball boy, the Pittsburgh Pirate pitcher. Walker Cooper remains behind the plate. Coming up to bat first for the American leaders, Leaguers at the start of the sixth inning is Vern Stevens of the St. Louis Browns. He's had one hit tonight and grounded out. Rip Sewell, a tall blonde, author of the Ephus Ball, the blooper ball, is on the mound. One of Frankie Frisch's Pittsburgh Pirates. Here's the pitch. It's swung on by Stevens and missed. This is the second All-Star game that Sewell has appeared in. He pitched last year. Just one inning, gave up no hits. For the season, he's won 10 and lost 6 in the regular National League competition. He's ready to go again now to Vern Stevens. The pitch to Stevens is wide for ball one. Count one and two. Truett Sewell, his name is. They all call him Rip. Born down in Decatur, Alabama. He's 6'2", weighs about 190. 
big chop. Ready to go. Ball two. National League are deep. Four to one. Incidentally, in the three games that the National Leaguers have won so far, they've won them all by four runs. Four to three, four to one, four to nothing. I don't know whether history's going to repeat or not. The count now on Vern Stevens is two and two. Here's Sewell's pitch. He swings on it and misses it and Rip strikes him out. Sewell strikes out the first man to face him. One out. And Bobby Johnson coming up. Johnson, who just rifled in a nice throw to cut off Bill Cabaretta at the plate in the previous inning. Right-handed hitter is Johnson. He struck out and grounded out in his first two times up this evening. Still goes into his windup. Delivers the Ephus ball. That's the famous Ephus ball. He just sort of loops it. It describes an even arc. He said last night that at the top of the trajectory of that arc, the ball was about 20 or 25 feet off the ground. That was the Ephus ball, and it was ball one. It didn't come over. The next one is a fast one, wide for ball two. As Bobby Johnson looks them over very carefully. Johnson came in with the athletics. Now he's in with the Red Sox. Takes the next pitch from Rep Sewell for ball three. And the count is three and oh. And Sewell now, after striking out Vern Stevens, gets himself into trouble with Bob Johnson. The pitch is inside for ball four and he walks in. Johnson on first, one out. And Kenny Keltner who made a hit to score the American Leaguer's only run, comes up next. That happened his first time up. The second time up, he popped out to the first baseman. Ken Keltner, the star third baseman of the Cleveland Indians. Right-handed hitter stepping in there, ready to go. Bob Johnson leading off first. Top of the sixth, the National League leading, 4-1. to one. The pitch, strike one. He started to go for it, pulled back. Up came big Cal Hubbard's right arm. Ball strike. Keltner, born out in Milwaukee, Wisconsin a veteran in this national pastime. The pitch is swung on. It's a ground ball down to the shortstop. The play at second for one out. The play at first. The very neat double play. Marion to Ryan to Cabaretta. Big Smash Marion engineered that one. Connie Ryan pivoting nicely and getting his throw over to Cabaretta. And it's the first infield double play of the evening. Top half of the sixth inning for the American Leaguers. And nothing across. And the score going into the last half of the sixth is 4-1 to one in favor of the National Leaguers. Incidentally, we have a very welcome wire here from Sergeant Mel Allen, who used to be on these broadcasts, former CBS sportscaster, now in the U.S. Army. He says, have both my G.I. ears tuned to the thrills of the latest cavalcade of sports, along with all our doughboys at the infantry school. Smooth sailing and regards to all. And we sure appreciate the message from Mel. On the mound now, as we go into the last half of the sixth inning, on the mound for the American Leaguers is Bobby Muncrief of the St. Louis Browns. Frankie Hayes behind the plate in the field for late tuners in. It's Ken Keltner at third, Vern Stevens at shortstop, Bobby Doris second, George McQuinn on first. In left field, Bob Johnson, in center field, Thurman Tucker, and in right field, Stan Spence. Behind the plate, the veteran Frankie Hayes. On the mound, Bob Muncrief. And that's the way the American Leaguers line up out there as the National League now comes into bat. Leading off will be Connie Ryan. Ryan batted 289 during the regular season. Ryan led off for the National League in the fifth inning. Here he is leading off again in the sixth as the National Leaguers batted around in the previous inning. The pitch is swung on. It's a ground ball down through at third base into left field. And Ryan rounds first and pulls up with his second hit of the evening. A very sharp ground ball. It just plays its way right through Kenny Keltner. Had no chance to field it, and Ryan is on. Up comes Slats Marion, who started that snappy double play in the top half of the sixth inning. Marion hasn't hit tonight. Lined out to the second baseman once and struck out once. Right-handed hitter, tall, gangly guy. Goes into a position to bunt. Bunts down the first baseline. The ball is fields, and Marion is touched out by the... First baseman George McQuinn before he's halfway down to first. The sacrifice was successful, however, as Ryan advanced to second. So Mark Marion down for a sacrifice. Putting Ryan in scoring position on second. And it brings up the hit, Rip Sewell, the pitcher. Big Rip coming up to hit here before the home club. Sewell, not bad average for a pitcher. Batting at 250. Got himself 14 hits out of 56 times up. Muncrief looks him over. The 
The pitch is swung on and missed. Strike one. Rip put a lot of sincerity into that one. He went all out for it. Didn't get any of it. One creep now tamping the dirt down on the mound. A beautifully lighted field this is. One creep ready to go. Ryan leading off second to pitch. Gets the outside corner. Or he strikes. Strike two on Sewell. And he turns around and looks up at Cal Hubbard, the, the big giant who's umpiring behind home plate. One out, man on second. Last to six, National League ahead, four to one. An overhand delivery, gets away from the catcher. Frankie Hayes rolls toward the dugout, and Ryan goes down to third with no play being made on it. And it's a wild pitch, charged up to Bobby Munkry. Ryan going to third. In the American League bullpen, Hal Newhauser, a lefty, and Bucky Newsom, an eccentric right-hander, warming up. Ryan on third now. The count on Sewell, the batter. One and two. One out. One creep winds up, delivers. It's a call strike. He struck him out. Sewell beats the trifle and walks back to the dugout down, and on third, up to the plate, Augie Galan, star Brooklyn outfielder, grounded out his first time up, flied out to center his second time, got himself a hit and scored a run his third time up, little Augie, bats left-handed, one creep winds up, shoots it in there, and he hits it, down to McQuinn at first, he tries to field it, but does, throws it over to Muncreep, and the guy is out. Very, very neat work by McQuinn on a hard-hit ground ball down the first base line. He was pulled out of position on it. It bounced away from him. He chased after it and wheeled it to Bobby Muncreep, who was covering it first. And so the two Brownies teamed up to get Augie Glam that. Retires the side in the last half of the sixth. No runs for the National League on one hit, one man left on, and no errors by the American League. At the end of the sixth inning, the score is National League 4, American League 1. There's no need for me to tell you why a duck's back sheds water. But do you know that tough whiskers do much the same thing and for much the same reason? Yes, whiskers are naturally oily. So to give them a good soaking for smooth, easy shaving, first remove the water-resisting film that surrounds them. Gillette Brushless does that trick presto. Also, it blankets water right at the base of your bristles, and boy, how they drink it up. For extra shaving speed and comfort, use fast-acting, thoroughgoing Gillette Brushless. It helps soften whiskers in a jiffy, cleans your pores, lubricates your blade, protects your face. And it's grease-free. Can't clog your razor or wash bowl drain. Ask your dealer for Gillette Brushless, only a quarter, and you'll enjoy faster, easier shave. We come now to the start of the seventh inning. On the mound is Rip Sewell of the Pirates. Behind the plate is still Walker Cooper. And hitting first for the American Leaguers is Bobby Dorr of the Boston Red Sox. Born out in Los Angeles. He's grounded out and struck out tonight. Takes Sewell's first pitch low for ball one. Bobby is the only second baseman present here for the American League tonight. Playing his eighth year with Boston. Hit himself a triple Sunday against Cleveland. Takes the next one and Sewell headed in there for a call strike. One and one. This is the fourth time that Dorr has been on the all-star squad. Right-handed hitter, and square away on the batter's box. The pitch to him, a slow ball, up high. Ball two. Two and one. Dorr takes a long grip on the bat. Sewell delivers to him. It's swung on. It's a high-hit fly ball. Going out into left field, over, under it, is Augie Galan, and he squeezes it for the out. That's all for Dorr. Up next is Frankie Hayes, the catcher. Hayes comes from Jamesburg in the state of New Jersey. Spent nine years with St. Louis. One year, rather, with St. Louis, and this is his ninth year with the Phils. Getting himself a home run Sunday. This is his fourth All-Star game. Frankie steps in there. Quite a home run producer. Tied for the league and lead in the American League with ten homers. Sewell's first pitch to him. Outside, ball one. Hayes batting average, 252. Dark complexion, sturdy catcher. Sewell, and he's wind up, shoots it in there. It's a call strike. 
A sharp curve has got the outside corner just above knee high to Hayes. One and one. Sewell delivers. Hayes takes, and it's a call strike again. A slow ball. It curved over. One and two. Big, tall blonde. Rip Sewell standing on the mound, waiting for the signal from Walker Cooper. Has it? Delivers. Hey, swings on it, missed it. He struck him out. Two down in the top of the seven. Nobody on. Looks like a pinch hitter down here. Check it up, boy, in just a minute. Looks like Rick Farrell, but I want to be sure. It's Pinky Higgins. Michael Pinky Higgins. Detroit Tiger third baseman. Big old Pinky. Born down in Red Oak, Texas. There's his sixth year with Detroit. Playing there at the old hot track. Batting 288 for the season. Pinky got himself a homer in New York Sunday. Swings on the first one. It's a ground ball down to the third baseman. Kurowski, the throw to first is in plenty of time and he's out. Higgins goes down, third to first. The American League is retired in order in the top of the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. And going into the home half of the seventh inning with the whole crowd here, a National League city it is, rising in support of the National League is in the last half of the seventh inning. Hal Newhauser of the Tigers is coming into pitch. Newhauser pitched uh, last Saturday against the Yankees. Shut him out, as a matter of fact. Very classic left-hander is Newhauser. Big, tall guy, six feet two, weighs over 182. It's his sixth year with Detroit. He's the leading left-hander in the American League. That was a four-hitter he won from the Yanks last Saturday. His third All-Star game. Newhauser is 115. That's the greatest number. He's 113, rather. That's the greatest number of games that anybody has won in the league so far. 13 and lost five. Newhouser has pitched 149 innings, in the course of which he's given up 110 hits, 57 bases on balls, and he has struck out 78 opposing batsmen. Has two shutouts to his credit so far this season. He throws a deceptive ball. He's got a lot of speed and a lot of curve on the thing. That takes out of there Bobby Muncrief, who was in for an inning and a third. Did very well while he was in there. Gave up one hit, I believe. Isn't that right, Don? One creep reached for just one hit. Yeah. That was Ryan Singer. Now, leading off the National Leaguers here in the last half of the seventh is Phil Cabarrufa, and he bangs the first one through. Right over second base in the center field for a clean hit. Cabarrufa's second hit of the night. And they have had terrific trouble with Cabarrufa. He has walked twice, singled once, and tripled once. So Phil, the first baseman of the... Chicago Cubs is somewhat the hero of things up to this point in this ball game. Cavaretto banging the first delivery of Hal Newhouser. Right straight through on the ground, back over second base for a single. Brings up Stan Musial. Stan got an infield hit his first time up, grounded out, and got on by an error. First pitch to him, he attempts to bunt, fouls it off. Strike one. Hayes still catching. American leaguers in the field are Kelton on third, Stevens on short, Dorr on second, McQuinn on first. In the outfield, Johnson, Tucker, and Spence from left to right. On the mound, Hal Newhauser of Detroit. Behind the plate, Frankie Hayes. There's a throw over to first. Cavaretta ducks back in plenty of time. Cavaretta's been thrown out at the plate twice tonight. Single and a triple and two off. Here's the pitch to Musial. He bunts it down the third base line. It's fielded by Keltner. The throw to first is in time, and the sacrifice works. Cabaretta moving to second. Man on second, one out. Walker Cooper coming up. Cooper hit into a double play his first time up. Struck out his second time. Banged out a run-producing hit his third time up. Big Walker Cooper, he of the famous Cooper brothers of the St. Louis Cards. A couple of big boys from Atherton, Missouri. Six feet three he is. Weighs himself about 210 pounds. Stepping in there now. Al Newhauser gives him the look over. Man on second. He swings on the first one. It's a ground ball. Back of second base. It's fielded by Dorr. The throw to first is not in time. 
Out of time. The hit. It's a hit. The ball hits deep. And to Dorr's right, Dorr went clear back on the grass to try to field it. And it can be said when Dorr can't field them, they're tough to get. So it's an infield hit for Walker Cooper. He's the second hit of the evening. Caparata moving to third. And on first and third now, one out. Dixie Walker coming up. Dixie has had two hits tonight, in between which he flied out once. Big left-handed hitter. Second in the league in hitting. Newhouser delivers to him. He takes. It's inside. Ball one. Dixie Walker, the people's choice from Brooklyn. Bucky Newsom is warming up in the American League bullpen. Newhouser ready to go. The pitch is a call strike. Walker took it, and it was in there. One and one. Caparata on third, Walker Cooper on first. One out. Newsom warming up for the American Leaguers as Joe McCarthy tries to locate the right pitcher to set down these National Leaguers so the American League can get themselves going and move back into this ball game. Newhauser ready to go again. The pitch to Walker is swung on, and it's blue. Right back, a oh, beautiful, beautiful catch by Byrne Stevens. Going very, very deep and to his right. I started to say it was hit right back over the shortstop, but not with Mr. Stevens there. A nice catch. Tearing back to his rear and to his right. Stuck his glove up and gathered it in. Dixie Walker is out. Whitey Kowalski comes in to hit. This is Whitey's first time up tonight. He's the third baseman of the... St. Louis Cards. And Hal Newhauser comes down for a conference with Frankie Hayes before he pitches to Whitey Kurowski. Kurowski's playing ball tonight in his native state. He was born over here in Reading, Pennsylvania. Used to be connected with the coal mining work over there. Whitey leads the National League now and runs batted in. He's batted in 51 of them. That's 75 hits out of 272 times up for a hitting average of 276. He's a dangerous man in the clutch. First pitch to him is wide, ball one. The redoubtable Whitey Kurowski. Call him Whitey on account of that blonde patch of hair he's got on his head. Men on first and third it is, two away. The pitch by Newhauser fouled off by Kurowski. One and one. Walker Cooper on first and Caparata on third. Last half of the seventh. National League ahead, four to one. Newhauser ready to go. Newhauser taking plenty of time. Takes his stretch. Delivers. Crop. And it's a clean hit down the left field line. In the score is Phil Cabaretta. Heading for third is Big Walker. Walker Cooper. And now Cooper is heading toward the plate. And Hayes must the throw in. And Cooper scores all the way from first. As Kurowski turns his way down to second with a double. No error on the play. No error on the play. Kurowski banged that one hard right down the left field line. The left fielder out there, Bobby Johnson, had to give it a big chase. By the time he could get the ball into Frankie Hayes, they figured there was no chance for Hayes to get Cooper. So two more runs cross. On Whitey Kurowski's double, and the score is 6-1. to one. Up next is Connie Ryan. Ryan's had two hits out of three times up tonight, a right-handed hitter. Newhauser looks him over. Delivers to him, he swings on it, pops it up high, just back over the infield. Going back under it is Bobby Dore. He waits, waits, takes it for the out. And that's all for the National League in the last half of the seventh inning. But in that last half of the second inning, they picked themselves up two more runs on three hits, one man left on, and no errors by the American Leaguers. At the end of the seventh inning, the score is National League 6, American League 1. Now, I can't tell you who originated the seventh inning stretch, but here's something I can say for sure. You can stretch and stretch a tube of Gillette Lather Shaving Cream for inning after inning of real shaving luxury. Yes, sir, just a little squeeze, a pea-sized dab, makes pillows of rich, moisture-laden lather. In fact, this cream produces up to four times as much lather as most other brands. That's equivalent to four tubes in one, and money, it amounts to the difference between two bits and a whole buck. Now, if you want to save dough and get slicker-looking, better-feeling shaves to boot, ask your dealer for Gillette Lather Shaving Cream, 25 cents. And now we're going to pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
the WBBM Air Theater, Wrigley Building, Chicago, 11. Thurman Tucker, the center fielder who has been hitless tonight, comes up to bat first for the American Leaguers in the top of the eighth. Rip Sewell delivers one into him, and it's just outside for ball one. Tucker is born down Gordon, Texas. This is his third year with Chicago. Wears spectacles, looks a bit like Joey Brown. Hasn't had a hit tonight. Tucker wearing those white socks is ready to go. Swings on the next one, hits it hard out into center field. Coming in is Stan Musial, making a nice catch on it. Tucker is out. Flying out to center field. Musial, a mighty good man out there in that garden. Makes him look good. Makes him look easy. Big Walker Cooper walks back behind the plate now. As Stan Spence, who has had two hits out of three times up, steps in there. Left-handed hitter. Sewell comes down overhand for the call strike. Stan Spence comes from South Portsmouth, Kentucky. He was two years with the Red Sox, and this is his third year with Washington. Playing right field tonight. The pitch is swung on. It's a ground ball down to second. Ryan is up with it. The throw to first in time to Cavaretta. And that's all for Spence. He goes out second to first. Two down in the top of the eighth. Big Georgie McQuinn. First baseman of the American Leaguers. And the St. Louis Browns comes in to hit. Got a single his first time up. Hit into a force out his second time. And his third time up gets struck out. Left-handed hitter crowds the plate a trifle. Sewell backs off the mound, studies him up, now steps up there and pitches the Evis ball. The great big Evis ball and it falls in for a strike. Honestly, that Evis ball is something for you to try in your parlor if you've got a high ceiling. He just sort of wafts it over there. Comes ball and there comes the Evis ball again. And it's fun it down the third baseline. Walker Cooper picks it up, throws it to first. They got him, he's out. The twin bunted the Evis ball and Walker Cooper picked it up and threw him out. The local fans here who've seen that Ethan ball a whole lot more than the rest of us have. It's a sort of a slow looper. But he sort of loops up in the air, and then it comes down, and he hopes it comes down right over the plate. It goes up about 20 feet in the air. Sewell said last night that he had a new pitch, uh, some relation to the Ethan's ball, that he calls the strawberry pitch, wasn't it, Don? Well, this Ethan's ball is enough for me. I'll take my strawberries in patches, not pitches. Last half of the eighth inning coming up now. National League is ahead by a score of 6-1. to one. Slats Marion due to hit first for the senior circuit in the last half of the eighth. Big Slats, a very graceful boy out there at shortstop. One of the great ones in the game. Wasn't any uh, decision for Billy Southworth tonight as to who he should play at shortstop. All year long there's been a lot of discussions whether he'd take Slats Marion or Eddie Miller of the Reds. Both of them excellent shortstops. But Eddie Miller injured his shoulder the other day. And all oh, this is the town in which he was born and where he lives. He couldn't play tonight. So Slats Marion is going all the way at shortstop. He hasn't had a hit yet. Lined out once, struck out once, and sacrificed. Swings on the first one, pops it up foul back into the stands here. Al Newhauser on the mound for the American League behind the plate. The veteran swell catcher, Frankie Hayes. Newhauser in a big windup, shoots it in there. It's swung on and blooped down the first baseline. Foul. Two strikes on Marion. Dizzy Trout starts warming himself up out in the American League bullpen. Two strikes on Marion. The pitch is swung on, and it's missed, and it's missed by the catcher. And Marion is on his way down to first, and Frankie Hayes has run all the way back to the wall here. So Hayes misses the third strike, and Marion gets on. And when you miss a third strike, or a, a fast ball occurs, or a wild pitch here at the Hawks Field in Pittsburgh where that ball travels. As Don told you, it's 110 feet from the plate back to the backstop. And before something stops that ball for you, if you're the catcher, you got to sprint all the way back there. Hayes had to take himself a long run on that one. Joe Medwick is coming in. He's going to come in to pitch for Sewell. That's a strikeout and an error, that last one, that puts Marion on. Strikeout and an error on the catcher. Here is Joe Medley standing in there. Joe batting at 226. This is Joey's 10th All-Star game. He's batting at 333, I beg your pardon. 
One strike on Joe. A call strike. Newhauser fogging it over on him. Here's the next pitch. It's wide. Ball one. Little old short muscular ducky wucky. Jim Tobin warming up in the National Leaguers bullpen will undoubtedly replace Rip Sewell. Medwick ready to go. Bunts it down toward the mound. Newhauser's off the mound. Picks it up. Throws it to first in time to get Medwick. He almost had it in time for a throw to second to get Marion, but it bounced away from him. He chased after it, picked it up, and threw out Medwick. So Medwick sacrifices. He had his orders, and he followed them. Moves Marion to second. One out. Brings up Augie Galan. Left-handed hitter who's had one hit out of four times up this evening. Made a hit in the fifth inning and scored a run. Grounded out two other times and flied out once. Finds Slats Marion leading off second, one away. Al Newhauser ready to go to him. Newhauser shoots it in there. Outside. Ball one. Newhauser looks at second. Marion has a long lead off. The pitch to Galan is wide. Ball two. Down into the dirt. Hayes scooping it up, holding it. Outfield is playing Glenn straight away. Left-handed hitter, but no moving around to the right on him. Here's the pitch, and he fouls it off. For strike one. Vern Stevens, shortstop of the American Leaguers. Talking it up out there in that loud, strident voice of his. Al Newhauser ready to go. Two and one pitch is inside. Ball three. Galan had to duck away from that one. Three and one to count on him. Looks down to the third base coaching line to Fred Fitzsimmons for his signal. Galan swinging that bat back and forth. Newhauser. And he stretch, delivers, and it's inside. He walks him. Ball four. Galan moving down to first. Looks from here as if Ken Raffensperger will probably be the winning pitcher and Tex Houston the loser, but we'll check that for you officially when the game is over. This game is not over. Bill Cabaretta steps in next. Two walks, a single, and a triple. This Bill's production for tonight. Left-handed hitter. Takes the first pitch low. Ball one. Newhauser working on the mound. Men on first and second with one out. Last half of the eighth. Here's the pitch. He starts to swing on it, pulls back. It's a called strike. Cavarada sort of crossed himself up on that one. One and one the count. Last half of the eighth. National Leaguers leading. Six to one. Here's the pitch, and it's a call strike. Right over there, just above the waist. One and two. Cabaretto looking plenty disgusted on that. Bill's a Chicago boy. The pitch, outside. Just outside the outside corner, two and two. Al Newhauser. Born and raised in Detroit, playing ball for Detroit. Playing tonight for the American League. Two and two count on the batter, Bill Cabaretta. The pitch is inside. Ball three. And now the string runs out. Their men on first and second. One out. The count three and two on the batter. Philip Cabaretta. Newhauser taking a look around at the bases. Ready to go. Cavaretta stepping in there now. Here's the pitch. He takes, and it's ball four. He walks him. Second walk in a row given up by Newhauser. Goes to land the second, puts Cavaretta on first, and shoves Marion around the third. The official attendance tonight, 29,589. Rooters in here for this 12th All-Star Baseball Classic. And at the moment, as they look down on the playing surface of Forbes Field, they find the bases filled with National Leaguers. One out, and Sam Musial, the leading hitter of the league, up. Stan's had one hit tonight. 
takes the first pitch of Hal Newhouser for ball one. Big Stan, a left-handed hitter. He's had 104 hits this season, which is more than anybody in the National League has picked up. Dixie Walker's right behind him with 103, I believe. The pitch, he swung on it, pulled back, but it was a strike. Newhouser had it in there. Very sharp. One and one to count on Musial. M-U-S-I-A-L. Stanley. Great ball player. Newhouser. A great left-hander. Winds up. Delivers. Musial swings on it. And it goes out into left field where a nice catch is made by Bobby Johnson. Now touching up after the catch and coming in to score is Marty Marion. With run number seven for the National League. Ends. Musial driving in a run with the fly to left field. Glenn remains at second and Cabaretta remains at first. And the score is 7-1 to one now. With two out and two on in the last half of the eighth. Walker Cooper coming up. Cooper has hit his last two times up. Went out his first two times. At least Cooper is scheduled to hit. And he's coming in to hit all right. Freddie Fitzsimmons is walking down off the third for a discussion with him. And Newhouser is coming out of the ball game. Newhouse is coming out, and I think it's Bucky Newsom coming in. It is Bucky Newsom of the Athletics coming in to pitch. Big old Bucky. A great character and a very eccentric character. Newsom was in the All-Star game back in 1940. Pitched three innings in it. Gave up one hit in those three innings. Playing with Philadelphia for the season. He has won seven and lost seven. Newsom has, has been all around. He's a sturdy, stocky, very husky right-hander. He's pitched in World Series, All-Star Games. Pitched for Washington, Brooklyn, Detroit, the Brownies. Now he's pitching for the American League. Stepping in there as Hal Newhouser goes out with two men down and two on in the last half of the eighth. Big old Lewis Bucky Newsom, born in Hartsville, South Carolina. It's his 16th season in the majors. The pitch to Walker Cooper is swung on. It's a high fly ball going back around second base, going back under it as Bobby Dorr, waiting, waiting, squeezes it for the out. So Cooper ends the inning by popping out to the second baseman. And in the last half of the eighth inning for the National League, there was one run on no hits, two men left on, and one error by the American Leaguers. So at the end of the eighth inning, the score is National League 7, American League 1. Now to put the jinx on mean, wiry whiskers and make them a setup for smooth, enjoyable shaving, Gillette Lather Cream is just the ticket. Gillette Lather, you see, is sponge-like. It holds a load of water and releases it freely. But here's the payoff. Gillette Lather removes water-resisting oil film from your beard so that the bristles absorb abundant moisture in a jiffy. Also, it stays wet on your face, keeping your whiskers properly conditioned all the time you're shaving. Water, you know, is what does the beard softening trick. And when you use Gillette Lather Shaving Cream, the water really goes to work. It's easy to check me, you know. Just get a tube of Gillette Lather Shaving Cream only a quarter and enjoy extra shaving luxury. It's the top half of the ninth inning now, and it's the last chance for the American League. Going to be a new catcher in here. DiMaggio is going into the outfield. Ray Mueller comes in to catch. On the mound is Jim Tobin of Boston. Mueller is the durable catcher of the Cincinnati Reds, who has just set a new National League record for catching 137 consecutive games. Tobin is on the mound. In center field is Vince DiMaggio. Musial has moved over to right field, and Walker comes out. Here's Jim Tobin, butterfly Jim Tobin. He's hit pitch two no-hitters this year. Pitching, and the first pitch is a called strike on the hitter, who is Vern Stevens. The next pitch by Jim Tobin is way outside. It's Mueller catching, Tobin on the mound, Vince DiMaggio in center field now, and Musial in right field. And it's Vern Stevens hitting. Tobin, softball's one into him, up high, and that's ball two. The count is two and one.
Vern Stevens trying to keep the American League in this ball game. The Nationals leading 7-1. to one. He's had one hit tonight. Swings on this one. It's a high fly ball going out in right field. Musial gallops in under it. Waits, waits, waits. Now it finally comes down. Musial takes it for the out. That's all for Stevens. One out in the top half of the ninth inning. Up next is Bobby Johnson playing left field tonight. He of the Boston Red Sox. Johnson hasn't had a hit this evening. Struck out once, grounded out once, and walked once. Jim Tobin of Boston also. Fogs one in there, and Johnson has to hit the ground to keep from getting hit by it. He went all the way down into the dirt. It's ball one on Butterfly Jim. Tobin pitched eight innings, I believe, on Sunday. But he doesn't use much energy when he pitches. He's in good shape. He fastballs that one in there and it fools Johnson into swinging on it. Strike one. One and one to count on Johnson. It's a Boston National League pitcher and a Boston American League hitter. With Ray Mueller of the Reds behind the plate. Now Tobin with his signal. Works without a windup. Softballs it in there and it's slammed hard and deep out into left field. Going back under it is Galan and he takes it for the out. That's all for Johnson. Two down in the top of the ninth. Up is Ken Keltner, third baseman from the Cleveland Indians, a right-handed hitter. He's had a single tonight out of three times up as his fourth appearance. And he's got to get himself a hit if the American League chances are to be kept alive at all. Tobin, side arms one in there, it's hit high, out into short center field. Going back under it is Connie Ryan, the second baseman, and he takes it in short center for the out, and that's the end of your ball game. She's all over. All over. And the score of the game is 7-1. to one. The totals for the nine innings, the National League, the winner, winning their fourth game in the 12 games that have been played between the two leagues. The National League, seven runs on 12 hits and one error. The American League, one run on six hits and three errors. We'll have some more statistical data for you on the game in just a moment. By the way, now here, to my great pleasure, comes Bill Coram of the New York Journal American Sports Staff to give you the highlights of tonight's game as he saw them from the press box. He'll be with us in just a moment. Seeing Bill working his way through the crowd recalls another sports writer who recently asked a rookie pitcher who'd been burning up the bushes if it wasn't lots harder to win up in the majors. Well, not in my book, he replied. Sure, you face tougher hitters, but look at the support you get. Well, man, it's like that in shaving, too. Yes, sir, it's much easier to pitch against big league whiskers if you have Gillette Brushless on your team. This cream helps soften up wiry bristles and jig time so that you can fan them out one, two, three. In fact, Gillette Brushless is one of the fastest acting beard softening aids in the shaving league. It removes moisture resisting oily film from your whiskers and blankets water right against them so that they soak it up in a hurry. For extra shaving speed and ease, get yourself a tube of Gillette Brushless. It's only a quarter. And it's grease-free. Can't clog your razor or bathroom drains. Also, it lubricates your blade and protects your skin. Believe me, men like Gillette Brushless. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce one who needs no introduction on our Gillette Sports broadcast, Bill Coram, smiling and seeing everything. Hi, Bill. Well, I hope we saw everything, Bill Slater. We might as well start off with the statistics here and get those out of the way. There were 29,589 fans paid here tonight, a total of $81,275, which with the radio rights for this all-star game bought a total of $106,275 for the bat and ball fund for the soldiers in service. The totals in the ball game with the National League, seven runs, 12 hits and one error, American League, one run, six hits, and three errors. By far the most decisive shellacking the National League ever gave the American League in these all-star games, and one of the most decisive either team uh, ever handed the other. In addition to the governor of Pennsylvania and the mayor of Pittsburgh here tonight, there was another notable and a great one from a baseball standpoint in the stands. He was Denton Tecumseh Cy Young, holder of the all-time pitching record of 511 games, won in the major league. Some old man, old Tuscaroras was, some old man, and what a pitcher. We're mighty proud of old Cy in baseball, hero of another day in the national pastime, and I wanted to mention him before taking up what struck me as the highlights of this 12th annual All-Star Game. Of the starting pitchers, Hank Baroy, the youthful former Fordham University star, had the better of his argument with a veteran Bucky Harris. Neither came close to being unhittable, but Bucky gave up five hits and what looked for a time to be a mighty big run, although it wasn't. 
In the final accounting, Baroy allowed three hits to Walter's five. One in each inning he worked, that's Baroy, but one of them was Phil Cavaretta's triple with two away in the third. After this lusty blow, Musial muffed a chance to tie it up by bouncing to Keltner at third base. Ken Raffensperger, the classy southpaw of the Phillies, and the only forkhander on the National League staff here tonight, worked only two innings before giving way to pinch hitter busting Bill Nicholson. It took one of the sweetest fielding plays of the game, however. Musial's line throw to Elliott, and the latter's returned to Ryan at second base to Neil Thurman Tucker, trying to stretch that one hit to save the Raft's bacon. For Connie Ryan's error, it set up an American League scoring chance, and Musial was throwing to third to cut down Houston at, as this fielding gem began. The same airing Ryan of the fourth inning turned in a Fourth of July catch himself when he went into the stratosphere to stab Hemsley's lashing drive with his gloved hand in the fourth. And, of course, it was Connie who sent the Frick men off to their scoring spree in the home half of the fifth inning that knocked out Tex Houston and saw the National Leaguers bat around and produce four runs, the most runs the National League ever has scored in one inning in an all-star game. That home half of the fifth was the wild and woolly stanza of the ball game, and it had to be a fellow from Texan, Texas, Houston, who figured most prominently in it. Getting his bumps from the suddenly awakened National League bat was the way Tex did it, however. The inning was a carnival for, for, of fun for the home fans. Pretty much everybody hitting, but it was Nicholson, the Maryland Marler, and the powerhouse hitter of the Chicago Cubs who really struck the loudest blow to free the previously enchained men of Billy the Kid Southward. After Nicholson had teed off against Houston, the home team treated the big fellow from the Lone Star State long, like a long-lost cousin. Bill's pinch hit double tied up the game by scoring Ryan, and the Cub outfielder promptly scored Connie, drove Connie home on Augie Galland's one baser to center. Cavaretta did it the easy way on a stroll to first on four wide pitches, and George McQuinn then dropped an out ball on Musial's easy tap to fill the bases. Walker Cooper hammered Galland home, but Cavaretta was nailed at the plate on Johnson's throw to Hayes. The people's choice, Dixie Walker, that's the people's choice of Brooklyn, the finest son of Flatbush, drove in the fourth run, the most the National League ever has scored, as I told you, and also drove Houston to the cooling waters of a welcome shower. shower. The fairy son of Flatbush also had another chance to score for the National League, but muffed it, but Whitey Kurowski came along and drove in the other two runs, and you'll remember that Whitey was the hero of the 1943 World Series between the Cardinals and the Yankees. Raffensperger and Rip Sewell pitched beautiful ball for the National Leaguers, but Sewell's was even better than that. It was perfect. No hit, nothing at all was scored off the Evis Ball King, and he treated the crowd to his Evis Ball on two or three occasions, and also delighted the fans here no end. They got nothing at all off a of rip, no hits, nothing at all, and of course he was the real star of the game from a pitching standpoint, although Jim Tobin, a no-hit fame of the Boston Braves, came in and had little trouble subduing the American Leaguers in the ninth. All told, the American League used five pitchers and finally wound up with Buck Bobo Newsom, all of you remember him, Bobo the great, great man. And that would just about seem to cover this 12th annual All-Star game like the Duke covers Dixie. To wrap it up in a nice, neat package so we can put it away in the lavender and old lace of memory's always glow growing book. It was an interesting, if not a truly great game of ball. Pittsburgh, the Mr. Big of production in a country whose production has amazed the world. In these war years, the Mr. Big of production in a country whose production has amazed the world. In these war years, and helped make our part of the world a safe and pleasant place in which to live, due to the cooperation of ownership, management, and the finest and most skilled workmen and workwomen in the history of mankind, put the big steel kettle into the little one for this game and turned out in goodly numbers. Most of all, we hope our people in the services enjoyed the game because since they're fighting for the things that are America and the ways that are American, they very definitely are fighting for baseball. And as Under Undersecretary of War Patterson, I believe it was, said, the right to yell, kill the umpire. Only, of course, Judge Landis won't let us yell that on a broadcast. All we folks at Gillette hope all you folks had a good time listening in. Don Dunphy, Bill Slater, and I had fun telling you all about it to the best of our ability. All of us have to have a little fun and laughter along with the taxis, you know. And now to switch to another sport for just a moment. Two weeks from Friday night in Madison Square Garden, New York City.